I'm here at Vox Days Zone with Jürgen and Josh, and we're going to talk about Spring 5. So what's coming up, Jürgen? Um, it's exciting times at the moment. We, uh, we just released uh, uh, 5 to the 5 um, actually just uh, yesterday. <laughs> and the, uh, um, the uh, uh, M5 releases for us the final milestone, the last milestone. In the, uh, we are about to enter the release candidate phase. The um, uh, 5 to the 5 is almost feature complete, but we've got a few feature areas that we still want to tackle. Um, and the, the, in particular, our reactive efforts already uh, coming coming together very nicely. I'm sure you agree, yes. um, Josh. The, the uh, 5 to the OM5 is uh, a very significant update if anybody is about to try uh, what we're doing. This 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 is the chance to. Uh, but we have a few uh, areas that we are venturing in. It's not just the reactive uh, uh, efforts, the reactive web stack, which we're actually calling Spring Web Flux now. It has a name now. It's in uh, WebMVC. Spring WebMVC Web has a companion uh, framework, uh, a separate but aligned framework called Spring Web Flux. Uh, but uh, it's not just about the reactiveness of it all. It's also about a certain functional um, style uh, showing up in, in several parts of the framework for bean registration, for endpoint uh, registration, we're generally exploring a bit of a different perspective onto uh, onto the framework from a, a Java eight perspective, from a from a Kotlin perspective. We have first Boy. class Kotlin support now. Boy, by the being based on Java eight, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an enabler. It's a great enabler. And we finally have a Java eight baseline. We can uh, expose Java eight uh, API types wherever, wherever, and whenever we want, right? Uh, not just reflectively like support them in application code, which we yeah. have been doing for many years, uh, but also in the framework itself, in the framework APIs themselves, which is a great a great opportunity, which we really uh, embrace. You, how how is the team finding working with Java eight in the, in the framework oh, code itself? I mean, uh, it's it's of course uh, uh, almost liberating, right? <laughs> uh, but I mean, uh, just to take the the perspective we had of the the past couple of years, we've already had a Java eight enabled test suite, so we've already we're very used to uh, using Java eight to testing the framework in a Java eight context to enabling Java eight in application code. Finally, it, it creeps into the production code base now, and uh -huh. we're actually somewhat defensive, right? It's we we primarily focusing on um, added value from an application development perspective, because improving the internals of the source code, well, it's it's kind of nice, it's a bonus, uh, but it's only something we really benefit from, and that the contributors possibly benefit from. Our primary perspective is the application uh, development experience, and um, having an even stronger Java 8 story there. And the Kotlin story uh, side by side, which that, is a great uh, 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 just pairing from from my perspective. That that's the Kotlin stuff is particularly interesting. I think uh, that just happened earlier this year, uh, late last year. We decided yeah. rather late. It came into uh, yeah five to the OM four. Uh, we're actually tracking the latest Kotlin one dot one. It's a it's a it's a collaboration with the, the Kotlin team at JetBrains. We we really benefit from each other's immediate feedback. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's even a sort of alignment between the release cycles. In the meantime, um, we are we are trying to um, to use Kotlin as an as an opportunity to um, uh, take a specific. Slightly different perspective onto our own APIs and our own API usage style. So it's uh, to us, it's not just another language to support. It's a very specific style that we're trying to apply, uh, and we're trying to make sure that the framework is not only an right. ideal citizen in a Java eight world in, in uh, with Java the language, but also in a slightly different uh, uh, design philosophy, which I, is Kotlin. And the functional style in Kotlin is actually really nice. It makes sense. Yeah, when we have Java eight as the only other player, now we can talk about at least basic functional programming in Java 8, right? So it makes sense to go to another functional language and say, let's make it work both in both places equally well, you know? It's kind of as, as we often uh, uh, often see this, uh, an API is only really uh, hardened if you take different perspectives, if it satisfies different requirements from different perspectives. So it's great timing. We've done the same with Groovy in Spring Framework 4, yeah. right? an even stronger Groovy story, and uh, now Kotlin basically gets equal first Parody. class treatment. Yeah. The Kotlin team has even, as you say, uh, what, I, what I find really interesting is they're super re responsive, right? Yeah, they, they are yeah. really aggressively trying to make this the best language for all the people that are using it, and they've uh, added things to the language proper and to the tooling, and so it's just become this really great... I mean, feature. granted, uh, from, a, from a mainstream perspective, uh, we are entirely uh, aware uh, that the Java 8 is the reference, right? So the, the, our reference uh, language certainly is Java. 
uh, in Java in its Java 8 incarnation. And we're also looking forward to uh, um, embracing JDK 9 to the best possible degree. So this is a, a key theme in its own right. Uh, JDK 9, not so much from a language perspective, but from an infrastructural perspective. Yeah. Uh, we're really looking forward to the virtual machine improvements, to the to compact strings, uh, the, the, the out of the box protocol stack that's ready for HTTP 2. The, um, it's worth upgrading to JDK 9 just for infrastructural reasons. Uh, and we've already went the extra mile to make that uh, uh, work for, for, for more than one year already, uh, more than one year, where we are uh, tracing JDK 9, uh, tracking the JDK 9 snapshots and kind of uh, uh, even the CI build on JDK 9. The, the, we, we're really trying to be there when JDK 9 goes live, hopefully end of July. Uh, we've already done everything we can possibly do. And then we even enable people to, to uh, opt into Jigsaw. Oh, okay. um, so we actually expect people to to upgrade in ClassCraft mode. The easiest, smoothest upgrade path, the one that I certainly recommend is stay in, in ClassCraft mode, take your Java 8 based uh, architecture and just run it on, on JDK 9. Um, that's the smoothest path. But if, if people choose to opt into um, Jigsaw, into the module path, um, then our Spring Framework deliverables, our Spring Framework Java artifacts are fine companions on the module path. They can be deployed as automatic modules. Again, we're trying to take the application development perspective. So the only thing that really matters is that the that an, as an application developer, choosing to use Jigsaw for your own application modules, you'll have a fine experience with, uh, the, Spring fr with the Spring Framework supporting your application modules. It's less relevant what we are internally doing and whether we benefit from Jigsaw, whether we deploy as automatic modules or with explicit descriptors, it doesn't make a difference as long as the application's perspective remains as, as first class as it should be. Um, so the, the, there's also an interesting time, of course, where we're a little bit ahead of JDK 9. Well, mm -hmm. we've been ahead of JDK 8 <laughs> back with Spring Framework 4. Seems like this is a thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, we even released three months ahead of yeah. JDK 8 GA, right? Back in Spring Framework 4. Now, now we're a little bit closer to the JDK 9 timeline, so that the timing works perfectly from my perspective. And we do a good job of following up if there is, there's usually not inconsistencies with the release and then the JDK version that follows a couple months afterwards. But no, we always, they... there's always a point release that we do if there's any kind of yeah yeah it's it's uh, to me those those efforts are ongoing anyway uh, all of them yeah. JDK, jdk 9 is kind of a, a an, an ongoing theme that we're going to explore um along with kotlin along with the reactive story along with the functional style um spring framework 5 is the, the beginning basically of a new generation of the framework uh but we really mean it as the starting point there's going to be a 5.1 feature release a 5.2 feature release continuing along those 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 trends along those themes and uh, uh, uh reaching a maybe more complete more more comprehensive arrangement um we see this as an ongoing mission that we're on and we we are so dependent on feedback uh, at, the, at the moment, we already have early adopters, even for the Kotlin support, uh, in particular for the reactive stack. Um, but the moment that we open this up to the general public, right? That, that's the way that I'm seeing the GA release. Uh, early know. adopters are great, but the general public has so many different perspectives to bring in, so much feedback to feedback to us. They can try it out um, on the Spring Initializer. They yeah. Can, can try it on Spring. Spring, yeah. Spring Boot 2.0, of course, yeah. is going to be, uh, late, later this year, is going to be the next kind of bring it to the masses uh, point in the in, in, in the roadmap. So you can try Spring 5 there if you want to kick the tire, so to speak. Yeah, it's entirely possible right now, right? The, the, the Spring Web Reactive Starter yeah. already delivers a Spring Framework 5 uh, milestone with uh, Spring Boot to the those snapshots, soon to be uh, milestones in Spring Boot land as well. So it's already all, all in place, but it's not uh, the Spring Boot to the dough is not going to go uh, GA before later this year. So I'm, Spring Framework 5 is about half, half looking, a year earlier. I'm looking forward to seeing where we go with JDK, Java Util Concurrent Flow, and Reactor, and Spring 5. That It seems like everybody's, the convergence around reactive programming these days is uh, well-tuned and well-timed. It's it's very much a, a yeah, it, it is a, a convergence point at the moment. It, yeah. it is a very collaborative effort. Um, so the, the in our reactive efforts, we couldn't do this on our own. I mean, we we are we 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 are the main sponsor of the Reactor project, right? The yeah. uh, the uh, we we have a lot of uh, people around us. Uh, we're doing really great work within uh, we, w within the company here, but also uh, it it wouldn't actually make as much sense in in in, in practice if uh, 
if, if only we would uh, venture into this territory. But there are status to drivers coming up. There, there are many industry stakeholders uh, letting and, things come together this year. And it's now that it, now that the foundational bits are in place, I really I'm enjoying seeing what we're doing in the Spring ecosystem and the R and D team around Spring Framework proper, of course, and the web endpoints, the functional reactive web endpoints, the web client, reactive web client, Spring Data has been upgraded to accommodate reactive programming, Spring Cloud Stream. Uh, for messaging, will be will support reactive programming. Spring Cloud itself has there's a few new projects that we're not, we haven't even announced yet, which will support reactive programming uh, that are going to be amazing. There's just integrations with the existing bits as well. I mean, the reactive stuff is permeating the whole stack, so you can take advantage of it and gain that support where you have long running sort of IO IO intense uh, workloads. You know, really ideal. So, what's your experience using uh, reactive programming in Spring? It's been uh, so. There's you've, been you've just done the reactive spring the first time, we, right? We've been yeah. There's I'm starting to do a, a new talk, uh, a talk that uh he and I will be doing a, a better version of at uh, uh, DevOps uh, Poland, yeah. Right. Uh, and that's the next opportunity right? for both of us yep. um, the, doing it together. But from from where where I've been, I've been working with the community members and with organizations, and the spring the spring cloud story has been well received, right? They yeah. they appreciate the. Uh, the, uh, the support for microservices, but there is that one small use case where they've got potentially long, uh, large amounts of data, right? Just large, large amounts of data they want to move across network partitions, and traditional synchronous I/O isn't a great fit there. Yeah. That that one little hole in the stack, and that isn't something to do. That isn't a deficiency in any way with with Spring proper. It's just a way that it's just a deficiency with the way that the servlet API works. By and large, it's not really uh, tuned for that. And then you're going to go to the database layer, right? It's not been tuned for that. So it's just nice to be able to say, listen, we've got a great story here. You know, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not just about the stylistic, right. um, the different stylistic perspective that we're taking, which is important in its own right. It's, 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 very, it's actually very motivated by, uh, by hardware resources, by efficient mm -hmm. use of available hardware resources. Um, and there are several factors involved here. Uh, use of HTTP2 actually goes very nicely with a, a reactive stack that makes... Service well, uh, ideally, a stream processing uh, more efficient than before with uh, uh, threads not blocking, waiting on streams, with leaving it up to a runtime event loop, uh, trying to do the best possible job in in processing uh, uh, concurrently processing streams. So we we really see it as an enabling uh, facility, an enabling model that we're providing here, um, in order to. Um, let uh, architects, knowledgeable architects out there build uh, really efficient, highly efficient web architectures for 2017 and beyond. And you're not, and it's not all in. You can, you're still using Spring. It's still the tools and technologies that you know and love. It's just now you have this extra tool in the toolbox, which is really and good. At the, at the same time, we have the uh, server based web stack in parallel, right? Yeah. We have two parallel web stacks uh, now. It's actually, it's not unusual. We had a server and the portlet stack right. before. Uh, we uh, the portlet stack doesn't actually uh, exist anymore in five, uh, uh, but uh, we have a new parallel web stack. So it's Spring Servlet Web MVC, and it's uh, the Spring Web Plug stack on on Reactor in parallel. Mm -hmm. We are still very committed to a highly efficient servlet stacks, mm -hmm. uh, embracing servlet four coming along now, the latest generation of servlet containers. So it's a it's a it's a parallel strategy, um, both for existing systems having a straightforward upgrade path uh, to uh, Spring MVC in, in the Spring 5 generation, but also for newly uh, written code, of course. Spring Servlet MVC remains a, a first-class part of the framework offering. Um, so it's up to the architects out there to decide what makes uh, the most sense in, in, any, in any particular uh, environment in, under particular circumstances with uh, the requirements um, yeah. that they're facing. And the Spring ecosystem is dedicated to making sure that that choice is not something you have to pay a cost for. So as I say, it's Spring Data, Spring Security, Spring Framework itself, Spring Integration, Spring Cloud Stream, Spring Cloud Proper, new technologies are all going to, they all leverage this where appropriate, you know, you won't have to give up parts of the, give up parts of the ecosystem just to be able to make the jump, uh, which is, I think, one thing that people have been, they, it's possible to do reactive programming with Spring and some other technology today, but you give up sort of that, those other layers, you know. Thank you very much. Well, for more, I guess people can watch your talks, which are going to be recorded. And uh, they can check out what's coming up in Spring 5, as well as what you've told us, and, uh, and how to use reactive programming with Spring. And come to our talk at DevOx Poland. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, He, he foolishly agreed to do a talk with me. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets accepted. If, if it gets accepted. Oh, please, I wanted to get accepted. Well, stay tuned for more. Yeah.